Welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past finalists and winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum in South Africa. I am Fiona Beal and I am hosting this webinar. I would like to introduce you to Sariki Musgrave, who will now tell you about her project with which she came second in the world called Spread the Sunshine. Over to you, Sariki. Hello Fiona and everyone else. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, I am sure that I do not have to explain the value that this competition has had in my life to, to all the rest except for Caroline who is joining and I am sure she is here because she is inspired already by what she heard from Helen and Vessel and Ryan. And thank you for the three of you. You inspired me again. I had a session this weekend with 46 Bloemfontein teachers who are all keen to submit their projects and it's just such a life-changing experience. I think I always believe Fiona, what she says is, is something that I follow but I won't, I won't um, tell you to believe that I'm a celebrity. Um, I think I'm just like any one of the other teachers who presented tonight who really wanted to bring change into the classroom. The challenge is that we still want to, to do what we are called to do and that is to teach towards the curriculum. And when you teach CAT like I did three years ago or in 2008, 2009 when I did this project, one of my biggest challenges was the, the, the number one, the fact that the learners didn't understand the value of the content which we were teaching and I wanted them to experience that firsthand. The second one is I wanted them to do that while I was teaching the, the co content. And then the third one was I, I had to bring my own passion into the classroom and I'm actually not a high school teacher, I'm a great a foundation phase remedial teacher. And I was always looking for the time and place to, to marry my, my love for computers with my love for people living with a disability. And that's exactly what I planned to do. I wanted the learners to understand the value of computers, but to link it with people living in less fortunate circumstances than what they did. So my project was Spread the Sunshine. And basically what I wanted them to do is to understand that the bit of sunshine is your knowledge that you have and that you can very easily share that with a wider community and that way spread the sunshine. Now I hope I can open all my, all my uh, links. So let's go to the next slide. And um, a lot of planning and a lot of um, went into the project and I'm sure you can download this. Um, if you want me to send you this uh, PowerPoint, I will do that as well. But what I did is I asked every learner to go and identify somebody in the community that lived with a disability. Um, and we had two learners in my class um, that was part of this grade 10 group who actually had a disability. The one learner only had one arm, um, or and yet she could type much faster with that one little arm of hers than any one of the other learners. And then I had uh, Barbara who had who had uh, deformed fingers, and she had four fingers uh, who never developed. Um, and so they were great examples, and they could very easily share with the class how it felt to live with a disability. To come back to the story, each learner was then encouraged to go and find somebody like-minded in their community. And um, we then decided to, to find out what are the challenges of these people in our community. And that linked very well with the CAT project where learners had to identify a problem, find resources to look for solutions, then um, implement the solutions and reflect on the solutions that they've implemented. So the learners um, had to interview the people with disability and this could really be anybody. Some of the learners worked with a school for special needs, some learners work with blind people, and um, one of the learners identified a neighbor who was deaf but who always wanted to learn how to sing and to record her own music. Another learner, for example, identified an old lady in the hospital 
that was bedridden, but her family was living in Greece. Another learner uh, went to a makuku in, in, uh, on a farm where there was a girl from eight, and she worked with the occupational therapist, and they used the computer to motivate her to do her exercises. So there were 60 girls participating in this project, and from the 60 girls, 60 little projects developed, which was quite a challenge for me as a teacher to manage. But the girls were great, and uh, to, to um, facilitate the, the project and all the little bits and pieces of things happening, we made use of, of ThinkQuest, which was just brilliant. And um, I'm going to try and open um, a document here. I hope you can, you can see that. Um, Fiona, I see that it cannot open my background, but I'll just talk you through it. So I can't open any one of my images. You will see on this slide, um, we will share that. Um, Fiona um, is mentioning here that she will load it on the wiki. I would appreciate that, Fiona, because it's all gone. I can't open it from this PowerPoint. But we use ThinkQuest, so we would daily communicate through ThinkQuest. Um, learners would, would uh, have a discussion going around about their fears because they've never had to deal with somebody living with a disability. Um, I, was, I was in bed for a week, and using ThinkQuest, I could literally be in class monitoring exactly what was happening, the conversations that was happening between the girls. Um, and uh, the girls then had to each identify a program. Some of them even went as far as writing their own programs, which was not the outcome that I have set. And I'm convinced if we allow our learners to be self-regulated, to plan their own outcomes, to set their own goals, that they actually set them much higher than what, what they would have done if we have set the goals for them. But 60 girls plan solutions for more than 300 people living with disabilities. They all implemented it. And really, when I went to Hong Kong with this project, it was not me that was supposed to, went, uh, to go. It was really the 60 girls who did an enormous task um, by, by writing programs for a boy who couldn't talk, by helping a deaf person sing using the computer and recording their first album, to just setting up a Skype conference call for a lady in the old age home who was bedridden to communicate with her family. I think the learners learned far more from me, from themselves than they would ever have learned from me. They have a passion for computers because they understand the value, the purpose that it can add to anybody, doesn't matter the circumstances. I know because I still have contact with some of these learners um, that they, they grew a, a compassionate heart to people less fortunate. Some of them have still a relationship with the person with a disability. Um, one of my learners are studying medicine at the moment, and as a, their community service project, she actually made a whole group of medical doctors now participating in, in them raising funds for learners who need cochlear implants. And these were all things that started in 2008. And, and I think that is what computers allowed these learners to, to be. They became, they became experts in their community, not because they knew all the answers. But through the year, they were challenged. And they learned where to go and get the answers. They also experienced computers as a tool for sharing, for finding, for asking questions. And, and they became leaders in their community, willing to spread the sunshine. So the fact that I, I can't open all the links, I think I'm going to stop here. And um, if you've got any questions, you can ask that. Um, the learners, um, maybe just I see the Toon Boom animation here. The learners, one of the challenges that I set for them was they had to create awareness uh, um, regarding living with disabilities. And these learners create flash animations, which we saved on cell phones. These were shared with learners from all the different schools in the Free State. And that became a big a fundraising initiative. And as a class, they then raised enough money 
to play for cochlear implant for, for a nine-year-old boy, which was just remarkable. So I think I've shared enough. Um, I, I, I just want to state that this was really um, an amazing opportunity for me to get to know another side of my learners in the computer class, to really get to know their passions, how willing teenagers are to help one another and to help their community. It was something that was my passion that I needed to do in my class to almost stay alive as a teacher, to not every year teach the same thing in the same way. And after implementing this project and seeing how it changed lives, I could just never teach the same. So, so that's my idea. Um, you are welcome to ask me other questions. Um, but I'll, I, I'll, I'm, I'm looking at the questions as they're coming in. Fiona, I think I'm going to give back the mic to you if there are no other questions. That was Sir Ricky Musgrave telling us about her project, Spread the Sunshine. Thank you very much for sharing all your secrets with us, Sir Ricky. Good night, everyone.